There is a growing trend among YouTubers in the MECFS space and brain retraining coaches to make the claim that post-exertional malaise is simply created by the brain itself and nothing else. In other words, that it is a manifestation of a hypersensitive nervous system. This claim is profoundly wrong, misguided and even dangerous and in this video I'm going to tell you exactly why. My name is Patrick Usher and I am author of the book Understanding MECFS and Strategies for Healing in which I distill the latest breakthrough research into MECFS, research that can really demystify the condition as well as sharing the strategies that I have tried in order to improve my illness. Links for that book are down below. So I imagine you have probably heard this idea before, that post-exertional malaise is simply a manifestation of a hypersensitive nervous system. In other words, all of the symptoms are created by the nervous system going haywire, and most likely as a response to the physical demand of taking too much exercise. The idea is that the nervous system reacts to that by becoming, um, by creating these symptoms in order to stop you from going further. In other words, your nervous system is so sensitive that it actually responds to exercise in this way in order to stop you doing anything more. And so within this is the idea that really there's nothing else going on in the body, there's no physical damage, there is no uh, problem, the symptoms seem scary, but it's all just coming from uh, the, the hypersensitive brain. Now, it is true that there is a hypersensitive nervous system in MECFS, and I would say that its activity does become heightened when you crash, but it is not correct to say that there is no damage ongoing in the body when you crash. There very much is, and the damage can be quite serious. Now, in this video, I'm focusing just on post-exertional malaise. I've done other videos where I talk about problems within this typical MECFS brain retraining narrative, in which I describe other biomedical findings that are ongoing in MECFS. But in this video, I'm focusing specifically on PEM. Now, before I tell you what's really happening during post-exertional malaise, I just want to say that I think brain retraining can be useful. I practice it myself, um, but it is very important to understand where it fits in to the overall pathophysiology of the illness and to understand that it is absolutely not the case that the only thing that's happening in these illnesses is a dysregulated nervous system. Okay, with that said, let's consider what's happening during post-exertional malaise. So this is a phenomenon that's quite hard to study because when MECFS patients are in PEM, they are usually too ill to be studied. They are um, stapled to the couch. They are not in a situation where they are uh, keen to get up, go to a clinic or hospital and get studied. So there's actually been very few uh, research papers looking at what happens during post-exertional malaise in particular. And from the point of view of understanding this condition, that's not ideal because um, the characteristic of MECFS is PEM and therefore in order to really make a lot of breakthroughs and develop treatments we need to know what's happening at those moments. However, there was an extremely fascinating and brilliant study done about a year ago by a team from the Netherlands led by Wust and Appelman and their study, uh, Muscle Abnormalities Worsen During Post-Exertional Malaise in Long Covid, did something really interesting which is that they did a biopsy of the muscles of the patients before an exercise challenge and also a day after once post-exertional malaise was starting to set in. Now I'm going to show you an image of healthy muscle tissue. This is what that looks like, okay? And now I'm going to show you an image of what the muscle tissue looked like during post-exertional malaise in this study. Spot the difference? What you're seeing on the left there, that kind of, to put it in an unscientific way, but that kind of gooey stuff, is actually muscle tissue necrosis. So what does that mean? Muscle tissue necrosis actually means muscle tissue death. That's right, post-exertional malaise actually causes some of your muscle fibers to die. Now this finding was big news in the MECFS research world. What it shows is that exercise physically damages the body of the MECFS patient in a way that uh, simply would not happen 
for a healthy person. This also tells us just why post-exertional malaise feels so awful. Your body is literally having to regenerate from scratch muscle tissue in order to recover from this problem. So when you are lying there stapled to the couch, hardly able to move, the primary reason is because of this muscle tissue necrosis. Now, we then come to the question, very briefly, of what can actually, you know, what causes this? And according to the amazing research of Professor Wirth and Professor Scheibenbogen, which I explain in my book, it is only thanks to an ion disturbance in the muscle cells that we can have an explanation for this tissue death. In other words, there's a problem in the sodium, potassium and calcium concentrations within the muscles that cause this issue. I'm not going to go into detail into that here. I talk about it in other videos. Basically, it's the cellular calcium overload, which is the final stage of post-exertional malaise, in essence, which causes the tissue death because cellular calcium toxicity uh, can actually cause cell death. So that's what's really going on in post-exertional malaise. And uh, I find it very frustrating when I see these coaches and um, influencers saying that post-exertional malaise is, is simply created by the brain. And for me, it's particularly egregiously wrong. Uh, well, it is anyway, but particularly with people who are more severe. Um, because, and this is something that I'm, I'm going to do a video on in the not-so-distant future, you know, what's actually going on in the most severe patients, particularly with these muscle tissue death issues and ion disturbances, um, but it's likely that it's even worse. It, it, it is even worse in those cases when people are bedridden or, or you know, really like not even able to swallow and so on. Um, it's, it's, it is so wrong to tell, to put out a message into the MECFS world um, saying that when actually what's going on is what I've just described. And there will be people who are very severe who are looking for answers. They're very desperate and they're putting their limited resources financially, mentally, physically into programs or influencers who are giving out a very misguided message. Now, that is not to say the brain retraining might not help. Uh, there is an autonomic dysfunction going on. It's happening for many reasons not just maladaptive neuroplasticity. There are things that you can influence at a neuroplastic level. That's fine. But to make the claim, particularly when there are patients who are more severe, that all of their symptoms are being created by the brain, uh, including post-exertional malaise, in light of the research, to my mind, it's unforgivable. So that's what I wanted to say in this video. Post-exertional malaise, the main reason it feels so awful is because of the tissue necrosis. Um, new muscle tissue will be regenerated. It happens slowly because the body is under such strain, but um, uh, it is nevertheless the main reason why PEM feels so awful and is objectively so awful. So that's it for this video. I will see you in the next one.